this is Tom Simmons coming to you from my kitchen and uh, the subject of today's video is choosing a target market and engaging in market, market segmentation. Target markets and market segmentations. So if you've gotten this uh, to this point in my video series you might have a business idea uh, you, or you have a business right now and you're thinking of how do I get customers? How do I get people to understand I'm here and how do I get them, how do I encourage them to come in and be customers? Um, and very often when I speak to students who have a business idea or to business people who are already in business and I ask them, well, who is your target market? Who is, can you describe that person to me who you expect to come through your door? And very often uh, the business or the student will say, everybody, anybody, I, I'll serve anybody who wants to come in here and, and we're open to the entire community. And, and I get that. I totally get that. But that, fund, that misses a very fundamental point. And that is, while you, of course, will serve anyone who comes into your business, the reality is not everyone is equally likely to come in to your business. And if you're spending time and effort and resources on marketing, on reaching out to potential customers, you're going to get more bang for your buck going after certain customers than others and using certain advertising and marketing channels than others. I'll give you an example. Maybe you have a restaurant downtown and sure, you're willing to serve anybody and everybody. But the reality is, if you are selling high quality steaks at $34.95 with plush seats and high walls on the, on the booths or a quiet atmosphere for business people to conduct business, you're going to get a very different clientele than if your special of the week is chicken wings and you have a uh, you have a TV blaring the current sports game, or if you've got a children's play area and crayons and and uh, placemats for coloring and and baby seats and high chairs and things like that, that's simply the reality. You're going to get different sets of customers, and it's important to know. Who is your most likely customer? Because that will inform how you build your business and everything you say and do in order to convince that target market to come into you. People who use LinkedIn are not the same people who use Snapchat. People who read Sports Illustrated are not the same people who read Town & Country. And people who listen to the local country radio station are generally not the same people who listen to NPR. It's, it's very important to understand that while you, of course, are open to customers from all walks of life, not every person from every walk of life is likely to be your customer. So. How, how, do we, how do we do this? In dividing the market up, and, and very often I know students are reluctant, they're squeamish to divide people into groups because it sounds like stereotyping. And it is. But the reality is every radio station, every magazine, every TV show uh, will tell you that the reality is people can be divided up into groups uh, and are more likely to respond to certain types of, of marketing than others. So there's four basic ways that we can segment the population in order to target them with our business. And those four ways, and I'm going to go through each of these individually, but just to state them up front, are geographic, demographic, psychographic, and behavioristic. So let's start with the easiest one. Geographic is just what it sounds like. When uh, Dunkin' Donuts 
uh, does a series of commercials around New England using uh, people trying to give you a New England accent, they are playing on geography and the strength of the relationship between Dunkin' Donuts and New England. Uh, there are companies who will do that with New York and they'll press hard home using a New York accent, or California, or Texas, or the South, or the West. Now, for, for a national company, it's easy to segment that way. For a local company, you're going to segment as well geographically. Because especially if you have a, a brick and mortar business downtown, there's only a certain distance that people are going to come to purchase your product. I mean, it should be pretty, uh, pr pretty obvious on its face that if you're looking to do so, uh, some newspaper advertising and you've got a store in Greenfield, Mass, you're going to get more bang for your buck advertising in the Greenfield Recorder than you are in the New Orleans Times Picayune. Right? That's, that's pretty basic. There's only a certain distance that certain people are going to drive. Now, for a, a, a small local business, that has a lot of competition in other neighboring towns, it may just be your town. If you're selling something like mattresses or washing machines, you may have a much larger geographic region that can form the, uh, the, the catch basin for your potential customers. But geographic is a very common way to segment and it's something you might even do without putting a lot of thought into it because it's kind of natural. The second is demographic and this is where people get a little squeamish uh, because when we divide people up demographically we are dividing them up in ways that sometimes make us uncomfortable. Men, women by gender, uh, straight, gay, black, white, Asian, East Asian, South Asian, Native American, Hispanic, non-Hispanic, English speakers, people with a Spanish culture or Haitian culture uh, or uh, uh, Middle Eastern culture. It could be uh, veteran status or uh, uh, military homes. Upper income with a lot of disposable income middle income, low income, blue collar, single moms with kids, young men unmarried, retirees, young people in high school, college students, middle-aged people, uh, those who have just retired and have a lot of disposable income and, and want a lot of leisure activities uh, versus the uh, advanced elderly who are more limited in activities. Disabled. There's a lot of ways to segment uh, demographically. And the reality is many, many marketers will, will do this and have to do it uh, because the commercial or the ad that appeals to one group of people may not be so appealing to another group of people. Uh, there are companies that will specifically use models with specific obvious ethnic backgrounds in order to reach into that ethnic community. There are companies that will put a rainbow flag uh, on their product or on their store to reach into a specific demographic community. All of these communities or segments react differently to different ways of saying things and different ways of presenting things. Um, and every radio station can tell you who their listeners are, whether they're male or female, whether, uh, how old they are, how, uh, how they view themselves. So it's, uh, it, it's a little uncomfortable as I said very often but it's a necessary part you've got a product or a service you're selling who is the most likely customer how can you segment that customer out and then reach that customer through your marketing activities 
Now, it doesn't have to be demographic. Uh, very often, uh, uh, the, the third approach is to segment psychographically. And by psychographically, what we mean is, how do people see themselves? What are their values? So, the best example I can give you of one of the most successful psychographic campaigns of all time is Harley Davidson. If you see yourself as a badass, if you aren't, but you really want to see yourself as a badass, Harley Davidson is the, uh, the brand for you. And Harley did uh, that incredibly successful psychographic segmentation for decades. In fact, they are, of all the, the companies in the world over time, there are more people with tattoos of Harley Davidson on them than any other company in the world. Very successful campaign. Now, today, a psychographic campaign, and many of them do this, will center around uh, someone's concept of, of being green, of being pro-social justice, of being for a, 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 a green, clean, fair, just, equitable world. And they will use those phrases, and they'll use buzzwords like sustainability, um, to reach those people who psychographically see themselves as, as guardians of a good future or warriors seeking to, to usher in a better future for all of us. That's a psychographic segmentation. Um, it could be based on, on how people see themselves as, and are proud of the fact that they're rednecks. Um, there's a whole group of people who will use that term in a very positive way. I'm redneck and I'm proud of it. And those people are going to listen to certain radio stations and they're going to buy certain products and they're going to hold certain values more than other segments of the population. So psychographic is reaching into the head of uh, your potential customer and then with an understanding of, uh, uh, of that psychographic, making sure you employ that psychographic in all aspects of your marketing campaign. So the fourth way to segment target markets uh, is called behavioristic. And this is probably the most difficult to, to get a grasp on. Uh, so I'm gonna spend a little more time on this because if you do it right, it, it, it works really well. Um, Behavioristic refers to what the consumer intends to do with the product. Now, most of the time, you, you make an assumption that if someone's buying your product, they're using it for themselves. But that's not always the case. So, a few examples of this, and the best one is, I had a student recently who had what I think is a really good idea. Um, he wanted to develop a, a home delivery service for new parents. So, you've had your first baby, first baby in the house. He was selling a subscription service, so that every month you would receive a box at home, and it would include things like diapers, pacifiers, uh, wipes, cloths, onesies at the right time, teething rings, lotions, all things you might need for a newborn baby. And you get one every month for a year or two years, however long you've signed up for the service. And I asked him, who did he see as his target market? And his response was, well, he assumed that new moms would be the target market. And I'm not so sure, and I could be totally wrong, I'm not so sure that that's his best target market. Yes, all of these are things that, that mom and dad are going to need. And they're all things that they're going to run out of, and they're all things that they're, they're thinking of, I need to go to the store, I need to get more diapers, but the baby just fell asleep, now what am I going to do? Um, and it gets a little crazy, so it's a great idea. 
but it could be that mom and dad who are trying to figure out for the first time in their lives how to wash a baby in a sink um, and how to get the baby to stop crying and go to sleep and worrying about the money coming in and the money going out they may not be the ones willing to spend hundreds of dollars on this service or able to think through the process however grandma and grandpa can probably do that now I know when I was growing up uh, my, my grandparents every Christmas would get me a new winter coat and to be honest with you way back in the day that was like the most unexciting present I ever got wasn't really into it but it was practical and I needed it and I understand the value of that now the grandparents of this new baby may be the ones most likely to a have the disposable income to buy the service see the practicality of it and be willing to give that as a gift to their daughter or son or, or grandchild um, to kind of remind them that grandma or grandpa are still there watching out for them um, as the as the months or years go on and so I'm suggesting a behavioristic segmentation that you don't sell the product to the person who's going to use it you sell the product to someone who's going to gift it to someone else that's behavioristic segmentation now another example of behavioristic segmentation is when um, a company is selling let's say uh, bath products for men whether it be shaving cream or soaps um, or, or some other uh, bath or hygiene product. The product may be meant for men. That doesn't mean that they are selling or marketing to men. Because they may discover during the course of their market research that while men are the ones who will use the product, that these particular men are in a, a demographic where the weekly or monthly grocery shopping is done by their wives. Now that's a very traditional model but, and whether you like it or not is really immaterial. It's a model that continues to exist within our society. And so if your good is geared towards men but they're men who are in families where the wives do the shopping then you end up targeting women the wives. Now you've got to figure out who are these wives? What is their income level? What is their education level? Where do they live geographically? What psychographically? What, what, uh, what uh, is their value system like? And your advertising or your marketing is geared towards them to buy the product which will be used by their husbands. This is another example of behavioristic marketing. Um, one company that exists on behavioristic marketing is Hallmark. When you go into a Hallmark store and you buy something, it is rarely for yourself. It's usually a gift, it's for a wedding, it's for a shower, it's for a birthday, it's for some other event. Um, you're buying memories for someone else. You're not the end user. That again is behavioristic marketing uh, because the person you are trying to sell the good to is not the end user of the good. So, you've got four different ways to segment your market. Geographically, demographically, psychographically, and behavioristically. So, I'd like you, keep, keeping all this in mind, as you're watching TV, as you're watching uh, the ads that come on the television set, or if you're watching YouTube and you get one of those annoying ads in the middle or the end of, your, uh, of the, whatever it is you're watching, I want you to look at that ad with fresh eyes and ask yourself, who is their target market? Who are they trying to communicate with? Who are they trying to reach with this message? Are these people, are they men or are they women? 
Are they old? Are they young? Are they middle-aged? Are they college? Are they high school? Uh, are they Latino? Do they see themselves as, um, as, a, as enlightened? Do they see themselves as uh, a proud redneck? Do they see themselves as a badass? Do they see themselves as a family values man or woman? Uh, are they buying it for themselves or is it for really for someone else? These are all the different ways you can look at it because all of these commercials, which cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to make and buy airtime for, have done incredible, excruciating research into who is the customer, who is watching the show, who am I trying to reach, and how am I best going to convey the value of my product to this person. This has been Tom Simmons, and uh, we were, we've were we been looking at target markets and segmenting that market, and in our next video, we're going to be looking more at how to design everything about our company and our product to scream, hey, target market, this product's for you. Signing off.